Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video and in the next uh, few videos, I'm going to be talking about predicting the products of electrolysis. So in this particular in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about pure molten salts. Salts. So uh, when you're doing the electrolysis of a molten salt, uh, how, how do you know what products are going to be formed? So let's go over an example. So here, my example, I'm going to do the electrolysis or talk about the electrolysis of molten NaCl, sodium chloride. And whenever you have a molten salt, uh, the only species in the cell are going to be the anions of that salt. So for uh, sodium chloride, it's going to be the sodium salt or the sodium ion Na plus and the chloride ion Cl minus. So those are the only species uh, that exist in the cell. So it's very easy to figure out what's going to be oxidized and what's going to be uh, reduced. So if we look at um, chloride ion, well, the chloride ion um, can't really gain any more electrons. It's not going to gain any more electrons, so it's not going to be further reduced than it already is. So the only other option for the chloride ion is to be oxidized. So that's what's going to happen at the anode. So two chloride ions are going to come together to form your chlor chlorine gas and that's going to release two electrons now same thing for uh sodium sodium only really loses one electron and now it's stable because remember it has that octet it's like a noble gas configuration once it has that uh electron the uh, noble gas electron configuration it is stable it's not really going to lose any more electrons so the only thing it's going to do is gain electrons so that's reduction so sodium is going to undergo the reduction and so here we have at the cathode <coughs> excuse me two sodium ions uh gaining the two electrons and then that's going to form your solid two solid uh atoms of sodium now one thing i want to point out is notice that I'm not using aqueous for the state of matter of the ions. Normally we would write aqueous, but that's if it's dissolved in water. Here we have a salt that we've actually melted into a liquid. That's what it means to be molten NaCl. So whenever you see molten, that's talking about liquid, not something dissolved in water. So a molten salt is something that's been heated up to such a degree that it actually melts and becomes a liquid. It's not dissolved in water. There's no water involved in this. So we have L's for our ions there. And so when we add these together, we get this equation here, two sodium ions liquid plus two chloride ions liquid is going to give you one chlorine gas molecule and two atoms of sodium. So although this is not a spontaneous reaction, we can drive it to occur by hooking up uh, an external source. So we can cause the electrolysis, we can cause this to happen in an electrolytic cell by an external source. So the main thing that I want you to remember for at least when you're predicting the products of electrolysis for a pure molten salt is that in the electrolysis of a pure molten salt, it's the anion that undergoes oxida oxidation, and it's the cation that's reduced. So once you figure that out, you can write out your, your redox reactions, your half reactions for the oxidation and reduction, and you can figure out what the product, products are going to be formed. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please like, share, this video, hit that like button right there. Subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell. If you hit that notification bell, make sure you uh, click all so you can be notified by all videos I put out. Also, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.